how to make a DIY reusable silicone respirator using the Moldstar 20T silicone rubber. Now, in today's project, I'm gonna show you how you can go from a 3D printed rigid model like this to a soft and wearable silicone respirator that is skin safe. Now, our project does have a couple of bullet points that we wanna hit. Number one, the respirator itself has to be very efficient in filtration. So we designed a large respirator unit in the front, and we'll show you how to make that. Now, the respirator itself is gonna be non-disposable, so it's gonna save us money versus disposable masks, and it has to last many uses. And with those many uses, the silicone respirator does have to be easily cleaned and reusable. Now, the silicone itself has to be flexible and self-conforming to fit any wearer's face. Now, with the comfort comes the non-irritation and the silicone has to be certified skin safe. So let's just jump into this project and see how we make these. To start our respirator project, we first need a model. And for that, we printed a uh, respirator model that we're gonna have available for you in the description below. You can download that. And uh, once we have the 3D model, what you really want to do is you want to study the model so you understand the contours. Uh, so here I'm just kind of taking in the model, studying the model so I decide how to make a mold. Uh, you're going to notice that the uh, filter housing has like a step uh, built into it, so a groove and channel system. So while the mask itself, the respirator, the silicone respirator, has a, uh, a groove basically that fits that channel, that's what creates the tight seal. Now, in order to uh, not mechanically lock the uh, model, our respirator model, in the rigid mold that we're making, we need to separate our mold strategically so that one part of that channel stays on one side of the mold and the other one on the other. So these little things are really important to pay attention to uh, when you're making uh, molds like this. And for this, we decided we're gonna go with a squeeze mold. So we're gonna make a two-part rigid squeeze mold. Now, what's a squeeze mold? A squeeze mold is simply a two-part mold. Sometimes it can be also a multiple-part mold that get assembled, where you basically have a uh, cavity uh, that you're squeezing the other side of your model into. Uh, the material that you squeeze in between then fills that cavity and shoots out either on top of your uh, mold configuration or through air vents in order to fully fill that cavity, making sure there's no air bubbles. It's a really nice way to cast fast setting materials and minimize any kind of air entrapment in your casting. And we do need to clay up our model using some Sculptex soft clay. This is sulfur free clay. And we're going to plug the bottom of our respirator. Using some hot melt glue, I'm simply going to adhere some of this insulation foam around our model. So instead of building all this up with clay, we're going to build it up with foam blocks. And then on top of that foam, we're going to lay out our Sculptex soft clay. And I'm going to basically now go around the model and build up a clay bed uh, that's uh, leveled with the perimeter of our model. So it's on the same level field. Once that is achieved, I can go ahead and uh, clean the perimeter. I'm going to go around the model and basically make that uh, separation edge as clean as possible. This is going to give us much better castings out of that mold. Also, notice that all the angles of the clay that I'm building up are sh uh, uh, sloped inward at a, at a slope so that the two-part mold can come apart easily and doesn't create any mechanical lock. Now, some of these little... Plugs are closed up, and then we're going to add some air vents here to the high spots of our uh, uh, layup. The air vents are going to help us minimize any air bubble trapment in our casting. And then we're going to add some keys uh, to the overall setup so the two halves of our mold line up. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit, and then we're going to place those three keys uh, and three vents. 
Let's go ahead and put some release agent down. Again, we're making a mold out of uh, urethane plastic, and we're gonna put down some Ease Release 200 on our model, and then we're gonna use a dry brush, spread that release agent around, and then spray it lightly one more time. This is called a spray brush spray technique. Now, the release agent is allowed five minutes to dry before pouring any material over it. Now to finish our mold setup here, we're going to put a containment wall or quote unquote mold box around our uh, clay up. And for that, I'm using some aluminum shim. If using aluminum shim out of several sections, make sure that the sections overlap so there's no leakage of material when pouring the urethane resin. Also, the shim should be secured firmly into the Sculptex oil-based clay. Now, the reason why we build up this shim a little bit higher than the actual clay up that we did, that becomes the lip of the second part of our mold. So that's going to protrude above the uh, line of the two parts where the mold actually separates, and that's going to become the lip that we're going to pry our mold open on. And uh, then we're ready to pour material. Now, like I mentioned, we're gonna be using the SmoothCast 65D for our two-part mold. And uh, uh, material itself is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume. Uh, it has a work time of two and a half minutes with a cure time of 10 to 15 minutes. That is also depending on mass concentration. So the more material you have, the faster it will set off. Now, as always, pre-mix your part A and part B thoroughly before dispensing them. And I'm going to mark some cups uh, simply by volume and go ahead and dispense my part A and part B. Always make sure to use clean working container and keep in mind that it has this product has a short work time, two and a half minutes, so work quickly, but thoroughly. So scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your mixing container. We don't really have time to a double mix here. So again, it's really important that we mix thoroughly. You make sure that you don't delay, pour it immediately. Uh, when you have the material concentrated in mass like this, it will tempt to want to set up really fast. So uh, make sure you get it into your mold box, and then we're going to allow this uh, 15 minutes to cure before moving to the next step. And here you can see the exotherm kicking and the material turning from liquid to a white solid uh, resin. The next step is to demold our first half of the mold. Uh, for that, we're gonna remove uh, the entire uh, setup from our working surface, flip it over, and then start removing all that buildup that we did. So all that foam, all that clay has to come off. And when you're cleaning the clay, I like to uh, uh, scrape off as much clay as possible I can with a tool and then come back and clean it with some isopropyl denatured alcohol now, the next step is to uh, add some uh, air vents here, put some clay back. Uh, we put those back. And then here I'm adding actually some pry spots. So these tabs you see here, those are going to be prying spots for the two halves of the mold. When you're casting silicone and you try to demold it, uh, because it's a soft material, there's a lot of suction uh, when you're trying to pry those two halves of the mold open. And uh, I know for sure we're gonna need a screwdriver or some kind of other tool to open this mold. So in preparing for that, we wanna add these pry spots along the edge of our mold. You'll see this comes in very handy when we actually go to casting process. Now, before we put our mold box around this, a uh, spray of the East Release 200. Again, the same procedure, spray, brush, spray technique. Allow it uh, five minutes to dry, and then we can go ahead and assemble the mold box around our model. Now, for the mold box, we're gonna be using the same aluminum shim that we used for the first half, but on this side, it's actually going to be a lot taller. So instead of a little, uh, build up we have here about three and a half inches and because the aluminum shim is so thin and flimsy make sure that you secure that tightly here I use some uh, buttresses made out of the Sculptix 
uh, oil-based clay, uh, but make sure that that is uh, firmly secured also in the clay below before actually pouring any material. And that material, just by volume and weight by itself, can move those mold walls. So you want to make sure that they're absolutely secure before pouring a large quantity of material. We can then go ahead and dispense our SmoothCast 65D. Again, this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume with a very fast working time, two and a half minutes. Now you can see me here putting my hand onto the mixing container and basically what I'm feeling is, is the heat from the exotherm of the material. Once I feel the heat uh, starting to set off, starting to feel the actual heat on my palm, I know that the material is activating and I need to get it into the mold. Again, don't delay. Make sure you pour your material into the mold box immediately. Allowed the material to seek its own level. And um, fortunately, I had a little break there, but we caught that in time, plugged it up, and let the material now fully cure for 10 to 15 minutes. This is going to be curing much faster because we have a large mass of material. So the exotherm is going to expedite that cure so that the cure here only took about 10 minutes before we were able to demold our mold. Now go ahead and uh, start the demolding process by removing the outer shim. This is our mold box. And then we're going to pry that mold open. Again, here's those pry spots that we put in clay. These are really, really helpful when you're making uh, these kind of rigid molds or any kind of mold where you're going to be casting silicone into. So once this is pried open, we can go ahead and clean up our mold, remove any uh, of the clay residue. And then uh, we can go ahead and focus on removing our model. Now, because this is a uh, rigid to rigid mold, so our model is rigid, our mold is rigid, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Keep in mind, this is not just going to pop out in one single shot. It will take some prying back and forth. This will also be the time when we discover if we did a good job on separating our model exactly uh, um, between the two halves and did not lock one half or the other into the rigid mold. Now, to give ourselves an advantage in this uh, casting, we're going to add some air vents to the uh, second half of our mold to the highest points of the model, not the mold, but the model itself. This is going to minimize any kind of air bubble trapment in those areas. Make sure that you drill all the way through to create an actual air vent. Now for the actual casting, we're going to be using the Moldstart 20T. This product is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume with a working time of six minutes and a cure of 30 minutes. Most importantly, this product is certified skin safe. We can go ahead and mark our dispensing cups. Again, this is equal volume, one-to-one. -one. And then we can dispense the part A and the part B. To add color to our casting, we're going to be using the Silk Pig Electric Blue. Uh, this is a fluorescent pigment that is certified skin safe as well. Simply add some of the pigment to the part A and mix it in thoroughly. Now add the part B to the uh, mixing container and then mix it thoroughly again. Keep in mind six minute work time. So you have to work fast, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing container and then dispense, pour the material into the actual mold cavity, the lower part of our mold. The mold can be now squeezed together by adding the top part and then we're going to add a weight to uh, compress the top part of the mold and get us a good registration of our part. Any of the extra material you should see shoot out either to the top vent holes or the side vent holes that we added to our mold setup. Our silicone is now allowed 30 minutes to fully cure before demolding. Once the silicone has fully cured, we can go ahead and demold our casting. 
with a large screwdriver, I'm simply going to pry that uh, mold open. And once that is popped off, we can uh, reveal our final respirator casting. Now, simply with a razor blade knife where I'm going to trace the outline of our respirator. And then the extra material here can be peeled off and the respirator itself is now demolded. Now here you can see the extra tabs where the air vents were. We can simply uh, cut those off using some scissors and the respirator is now ready for final assembly. Now that our respirator part is made, we can focus on the filtration system. And for that, we're going to be making a mold as well of these two parts. These two components uh, will form the actual filtration unit. For that uh, molding process, I'm simply going to set up some Sculptic soft clay on a nice flat surface. And I'm going to put the models down onto the clay. The center of the block mold here will receive a space holder. This is going to be first sealed with some sonite wax so that the silicone can't uh, seep into the uh, melamine board. Uh, more importantly, this is going to save us some material and make the demolding of a block mold like this much easier by keeping that center uh, collapsible, basically. Same way, I'm using here the aluminum flashing to make my uh, mold boxes. Simply press them into the clay, and now we're ready for the actual molding process. We're going to be sticking to the same material. The Moldstar 20T is our molding product here as well. Makes the whole project easier to have one molding and casting product. Now the part A and B are dispensed equal amounts, one to one by volume, and then mixed in a clean container. And always make sure you scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing containers, and then make sure that you actually pour your material in one spot. Don't delay, these are fast setting materials. You don't wanna have this thicken in your mixing containers. Now we're pouring the material in one spot, allow it to find its way up, and now we're gonna allow this a full cure for 30 minutes before demolding. After the mold star has set up, we can uh, simply pop the molds off of our clay setup, and then we're going to demold the original models that are in the silicone for this, uh, uh, shield here for the grill that's pretty easy pops right out for the uh, housing itself I'm gonna have to cut this mold open and whenever you're cutting mold boxes open use a s-shaped curve if you do need to make your own mold knife you can follow the link to that and uh, here you can see that uh, that model now pops out of the mold quite easily. So you can see the mold is split along the four corners, making it much easier to demold. Now we can go ahead and cast our uh, parts out of the Smoothcast 65D. Uh, the reason why we chose the 65D for the respirator uh, uh, housing here as well is that it is semi-rigid, uh, so it does have a little bit of give. Now I'm not adding any color to this, so I'm simply gonna mix the A and B together in a clean mixing container. As always, keep the working time of your materials in mind. This is fast setting products. And then get it into your mold. Again, a short pot life of two and a half minutes, so work fast. Here I'm going to simply pour the material into our molds. And then any of the extra material that's on top, we're gonna scrape away using a squeegee. Now keep in mind that these parts we're casting have a, a thin profile. They're thin in, in uh, uh, the cross section. So here again, you can see it slowly set up. So we're gonna allow this not 15 minutes, but about 45 minutes to fully set up. Our castings have now cured and are rigid. We can simply demold them out of the molds we made earlier. And then we're gonna uh, clean them up uh, simply by using a razor blade. To create a filtration on our respirator, we're gonna use a HEPA um, filter bag for vacuum. I'm simply going to trace the shape of our respirator housing here and cut it using some regular scissors. 
and then the filtration unit can get assembled. And you always want to overlap the actual housing with the filtration, pa filtration paper a little bit, which creates a good seal all around the actual filter itself. Now that the filter is assembled, we can assemble the entire respirator. We're going to put this into the actual respirator. And we're going to make sure that that uh, channel sits firmly in the actual silicone. A rubber band is cut down and then it's passed through the holes on the side of our respirator. The rubber bands are secured using an office stapler and are simply tacked together. Now, there's many different options as far as straps or rubber bands that you can attach to a respirator like this. We found this option to be very easy and straightforward and work great for our application. Due to its soft nature of the silicone, the respirator housing fits many different face shapes, sizes, and is comfortable to wear for long periods of time. The silicone respirator can be disinfected and sterilized in a regular dishwasher or washed by hand with soap and hot water. The respirator housing can easily be washed by using soap and hot water, but make sure you don't put it in a dishwasher because it does not have the heat deflection off the silicone. So again, the sterilization method for the silicone mask can be either autoclave sterilization at 265 Fahrenheit. You can scrub it with soap and hot water. You can wash it in a dishwasher on a sterilization cycle, or you can use a UV uh, sterilizing light. Also, you can wash it with uh, a WHO formula hand sanitizer. Now the sanitizer for the filter assembly, you can uh, scrub it with soap and hot water by hand, or you can use a UV sterilizing light. Also, you can wash it with uh, a WHO formula hand sanitizer. And here I just wanted to show you guys that different coloring options are available for the silicone that are certified skin safe. So if you wanna use uh, some of our uh, Silk Pig electric colorants, uh, they are certified skin safe and can be easily added to the silicone itself. And here again, you can see me wearing that respirator. It feels nice and comfortable, it's soft, and because it's made out of silicone, it's easily cleanable and comfortable to wear. And I was really happy how this project came together and the final result looks very professional. Now, I'm sure that some of you will be wondering what's the per unit cost on a respirator like this. And once I actually made the molds to produce these masks, I broke down the cost per unit uh, based on a one gallon unit uh, of material. So a uh, casting of the silicone mask was about $4.11, again, based on the gallon unit of the mold star. Uh, the SmoothCast 65D filter housings broke down to about 48 cents. Uh, the rubber bands we got in a pack of 400 and they broke down to 19 cents per mask. The HEPA filter bags that we used for uh, these uh, were basing on a two pack that we got online and these break down to 28 cents per unit brings down the cost of the uh, material used for a unit to about $5.06. So you can see that even manufacturing these ourselves can be quite affordable. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you'd like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create this rigid mold and cast dozen of silicone respirators in no time at all. Now, let's take a look at our project goals. We were able to create a respirator that provides efficient filtration. Now, the respirator itself is gonna save us money versus disposable respirators and masks. Let's us use it many times because the silicone itself is easy to clean and reusable. The silicone mask itself is flexible and conforming to fit pretty much anybody's face. It is comfortable, non-irritating, and the silicone is certified skin safe. 
Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos, remember to subscribe.